Good evening and welcome to our 2020 carol service. Maybe a bit different. Uh, welcome to everybody who's joined us on Zoom. Um, I was just thinking about having to tell what the fire drill is, but I think if you don't know the fire drill in your own house, then maybe you ought to uh, sort things out. But basically, if there is a problem, you folk in the front here. This, by the way, Zoom, take no notice of the next minute. You go out that way, through that door and down to Piggy Lane. We'll go out back door and meet you down there. Okay, um, I think that's it. Now, the other thing I have to say, it doesn't affect you at home on Zoom. Um, we have a dedicated music group who are going to sing. They are socially distanced. So we hopefully qualify on that count. Um, they're going to sing, you are going to hum, if you don't already hum already. Um, so yeah, you can't sing, sorry about that. Um, so I think I've dealt with all the uh, administrative things. We're going to start by singing uh, away, sorry, away in the manger. I don't know what I got that on my head for. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. So please enjoy listening to the music group and uh, go from there. You can sing at home. Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you that despite the troubles and trials of the past year, we are able to celebrate the coming of your son, Jesus, to this earth at Christmas. We thank you for this special time of the year. We join with the shepherds who on the night of your birth glorified and praised God for being allowed to see your glory in the form of a tiny child. And we join with the Magi who on seeing the baby Jesus bowed down and worshipped him, the almighty God. We acknowledge Jesus as wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Help us to see your magnificence as we come together to praise you. In these times of so much anxiety and fear, our hearts are filled with thanksgiving and praise for the birth of your son, Jesus, and all that that amazing event means, the incarnation of your son at Christmas. Father, we bow in humility. We acknowledge our sinfulness. We acknowledge that we are undeserving of your love. And we are grateful to thank you for coming to earth as our savior. We understand that Christmas is an exciting way, in its exciting way expresses God coming to, li to live with us. Give us, we pray, the experience of your divine peace at this time. The angels spoke of Jesus bringing peace on earth. We pray that this peace, which passes all human comprehension and understanding, will calm our anxious spirits. We pray for all those who are suffering this Christmas as a result of the virus, both physically and emotionally, that they may experience your grace, mercy and healing touch. We pray that those who will be alone will experience the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And we pray for all those who are doctors, nurses, carers, that they would experience your power and strength enabling them to cope with the added pressure and stress, stress the illness is bringing. Father, through your Holy Spirit, we crave your presence with us this service. Bless our time together, we pray. And as did the shepherds, may we leave this place glorifying and praising God. Amen. Jackie is now going to read to us from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. 
he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. We have a mixture of carols this evening. Three of them are traditional and three of them are what we call local carols. And this is one of the local carols. So we're going to listen to the group singing, Hark, Hark, What News? Hark, hark, what news? to hear two readings. The first one, obviously, is very well known. Both of them are well known. One is the story of the shepherds seeing the angels, and the second one is the story of the Magi coming to visit Jesus in Bethlehem. So the group's now going to sing. Sorry, I'll get it right now. First of all, Judith's going to read Luke 2. Verse 8 to verse 20. And there were shepherds out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, 
and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thanks, Judith. And now oh, a traditional carol, Hark the Glad Sound, the Saviour Comes. Hark the glad sound, the Saviour comes, the Saviour After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem 
and asks, where is he? Where is the one that has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Then King Herod, when he heard this, was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when, I, when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Our next carol will be a very well-known one locally. Goes by the name of Stannington. So sing all ye people of the earth today. reading is going to be read by Angela. It's the passage in the book or the letter that Paul wrote to the church at Philippi and it summarizes aptly 
the way that Jesus left heaven and came to earth and died in his place so that we might be able to receive forgiveness. And so when you invite him into your heart, you do not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but make himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Our next carol, certainly well known, it's national one, O oh, Little Town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. First of all, I'd like to thank people. As I was sitting there listening to the group singing, it just struck me how much work has gone into all this. And I just want to say that I'm very appreciative of the fact that people like Matt and Danny have spent time looking at how to do the electronics and stuff and the Zoom, how the choir group have put together this singing how everything has been, quite frankly, different this year and has therefore meant a lot of extra thinking and work. And so I just want to say thank you to all these people because it's been a very, very uh, special time.
time that we've been able to have as a result of their efforts. So thanks very much. What I want to say, hopefully will be short, but certainly to the point. Christmas is different this year. 2020 has been affected by a new advent. An advent different to the one that churchgoers have been celebrating. This is the advent of a virus. The coronavirus. This advent is so impacting on life that it has forced the government into applying restrictions which have paralyzed and frightened the nation physically, emotionally, and economically. And now it is affecting this most special annual Christmas festivity. The government has felt it necessary to limit family gatherings to Christmas day only. Even for those who are without a Christian faith, Christmas has come to represent a time when families get back together again. Christmas has become a time when people want to go home, evidenced by the number of people catching trains out of London last night and this morning. We have a deep yearning to be home. We have a built uh, in desire to be families together at home. But this year, there are limitations on how that can happen. No doubt, we are all feeling the impact. Maybe more than at any other time of the year, Christmas brings out the importance of relationships within families. But Christmas is different this year. And with this in mind, I would like to focus on two relationships within a family setting, which are mentioned in the Bible. They are both about a father and a son. The first relationship connects importantly to Christmas and concerns the relationship between God the Father and his son Jesus. Jesus in his gospel, said, sorry, John in his gospel says this, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. In this one verse, we have the reason for Christmas. And it isn't simply about enjoying being together as families and being at home. It has to do with the condition of humanity as a whole. We have no doubt heard the story of Jesus' birth many, many times. But let me remind you of what the angel said to the shepherds. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The condition of humanity is such that it needs to be saved and the consequences of its own sin and willfulness. You see, the Father and the Son were both involved in the creation of mankind. What they created was perfect and mankind initially enjoyed a perfect relationship with God. But then mankind chose to rebel against God and the relationship broke down. As a consequence of man's sin and rebellion, 
he was separated from God and condemned to God's anger. Christmas has become a consumerist festival with a focus on entertainment and materialism. But this year, we are being forced to rethink. The original meaning of Christmas hasn't changed. It's still about a father sending his son into the world. Because of the virus situation, we have a real opportunity this year to think about how things change. Is Christmas different this year? No, not in God's reckoning, but it could be in our reckoning. John says that God so loved the humanity he had created that he was prepared to send his son to earth to take the punishment in our place that we, mankind, deserve. That's why the angel referred to this child born in Bethlehem as the saviour. It forced the separation of the father from his special son, all because of love for us. The very first Christmas was very different to the one we have always celebrated. It was about a father and his son and love for the, the created family. As we are forced to rethink things this year, let me ask you a question. How is Christmas going to be different this year for you? And I don't mean the physical constraints, no family, no feasting, no traveling. I mean time to think it through. What is Christmas really all about? And with that thought bouncing around in your minds, let me introduce you to another father and son story. The story that Jesus told. It's actually about two sons, but I simply want to focus on one of them. In the story, the son asks his father for his inheritance before the father has even died. He then deserts his father and goes away and blows the lot. His father would dearly love for his son to come home, to be with them, his family, but his son isn't there. In fact, he probably doesn't, didn't want to be there either, initially. His life was full of high living, hedonism, self-gratification. So keen is his father to have his son come home. He faithfully keeps looking up the road, hoping for his son's return. The father cared so much for his wayward son. And then the son comes to his senses and he realizes his folly and he sees the error of his ways and his sinfulness and he repents and he returns to the family home, to the father who loves him. And the father Jesus says, sees him while the son was still a long way off and is filled with compassion for him and runs to his son and throws his arms around him and kisses him. What a feast and celebration the father lays on for his returning son. He says, my son was dead 
and he's alive again. He was lost and he's found. What is the point of Jesus' story? The father in the story is God. The same father as in the first part of this message. And the son this time is us. The father loves us so much that he wants us at home with him. He yearns that for that to happen and looks out for it to be the case. And we are the son who has gone his own way and thrown the entire father's goodness in his face and rebelled against him. At Christmas, we all crave the family to be together in the loving surroundings of home. We know what it feels like. How much more does God want us, his sons and daughters, to be at home with him? At Christmas, we should be celebrating the love of a gracious father and son. But are we responding to this same father by rejecting his love and going our own way? There is still time to change course and return to the father's home. So how is Christmas going to be different this year for you? I would like to take you to take this unique time and year to consider what the true meaning and celebration of Christmas is. That meaning has never changed in the Father's eyes. It can do, but it can do for us. The Father want, sent his Son at Christmas so as to become our salvation. He wants us to come home to him. And we have to ask ourselves the question, are we prepared to change our thinking and hearts and return to the Father's love for us? Will Christmas be different for you this year? The music group's going to sing another carol. It's a local one called Jacob's Well. But I really would like you to think about the last two verses as they get sung. Because it expresses the need that Britain has for Jesus Christ. It doesn't talk about the Father and Son particularly as such. But it is the message of salvation that we all need at Christmas. So Jacob's well. <coughs>
There's a story of the nativity, but it's a story that comes up in the life of Jesus. Who is the stranger? It's Jesus himself. And what does Britain need more than anything right now? It needs Jesus. Not just healing from the coronavirus, important though that is. So let's remember this Christmas, the stranger who gives us eternal life. Let's close in prayer. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his gracious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God our Savior be glory majesty, power, and authority. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, before all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for coming to our service. It's hardly worth saying this, but one of the things you're supposed to do is uh, leave and socially distance and not hang around for too long, if at all. So thank you very much for coming. And sorry to end on that particular note, but there we are. Thank you.
Merry Christmas, everybody.